As interviews go, they don't get much better than this. I spoke with a woman who has had an incalculable effect on Australia. She is country music in this country. At 90 years young, she's had a wild, colourful life on the road, exploring every single corner of the land. And I will admit that I was completely taken in by her. This gorgeous human is someone I would absolutely love to have a beer with. This is Build Series Sydney with Joy McKean. Howdy partners, I hope you are well. Now I can't oversell the significance of my next guest here on Build Series Sydney. She is a pioneer, a powerhouse, a songwriting genius. They refer to her as the grand lady of Australian country music. So it's an absolute pleasure to talk with the Joy McKean. Hello, Joy. How are you doing? Hello, Danny. How are you? I'm, I'm very good. It really is quite a, a special uh, thing for me to talk with someone like you. And uh, I mean, just recently directed by Kriv Stenders, uh, a film based on your life called Slim and I has been released and you just went to the premiere. What yeah. was it like? Tell me about well, the film. That was exciting. Um, we went to the uh, new cinemas in Kempsey. Um, big um, stylish sort of image of Slim on the wall <laughs> as well. And um, the poster everywhere and everybody had a great time. We went yeah. from one, um, talked about it and met lots of people, the local people again, you know, all our friends and they're really, really excited to have it happen uh, in Slim's hometown. Yeah. Um, so you were watching the film with friends and family. Uh, what was it like to see your life put up on the big screen like that? It can be confronting, Danny. <laughs> um, you know, it just was a bit apprehensive when I was talking at different times during it, you know, but it was great to see everybody up there, you know, and talking about it. And, uh, and also, it's amazing what I did love really, uh, James, my grandson, was co-producer of the film, and he had been the one uh, for years building up this archive of home movies and things like that. And some of those home movies, I, I remembered some of the things <laughs> that were going on at the time. <laughs> oh dear me, yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, were you were you drinking and partying? Uh, what were the kind of things that were going on? Can you tell us? <laughs> no, actually, you're probably out in the middle of the Nullarbor or something, or Eucla <laughs> with all the. Uh, there was one there, and I think that uh, it might have been at Eucla at one stop there. And uh, I seem to be looking after a baby goat or something. <laughs> I don't know whether I had to get it out of the road or the road. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, oh, did you think about things like that? <laughs> um, so for us, I mean, it's very different, for, you know, for our audience to be, to watch a film like this, I guess we probably wouldn't know the stories behind uh, some of that footage. So were there any moments in the film that had a, a big impact on you because you knew the stories behind uh, the footage? Yes, I mean, but there were, so many of them, Danny, you know, because I've been around a long time <laughs> when you come oh, to think of it. But, you're a spring um, chicken. Ah, uh, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> but true, it's, uh, I don't know, every, these were older things, you know, where the kids are small and also it was out on the road. We got, uh, for instance, had some shots there. I must have had time to sit beside the road with um, the old movie camera because this was this one was out um, heading for Wilcannia I think but at the time it was um, you know those really muddy roads when it was actually raining if it was mm. going to rain and break a drought it would do do it when we were on something like black soil or something that could really bog us and so I had some photos there of some of the uh, uh, fellas pushing their car, you know, the, you know, the vehicles and all that sort of thing. And I had to think about that too, because that was the 
first time my Auntie Una came out to help me look after David and work. And the very first trip I drove her on, she was in the car with me and with David, was heading out on um, a dirt road, which was one of those sort of black soil roads. So Auntie Una from Sydney, though she was born in the country, she was out there uh, finding what she could to put under the wheels of the vehicle. And we were both pretty well mud covered by the time we got <laughs> there. But I'll tell you one thing, Danny. We were able to go up and shoot past the boys. They were bogged well and truly. <laughs> <laughs> I bet they were. I mean, because you really did go to some incredible parts of the country. Um, something that really jumped out to me was when the renowned uh, Indigenous writer, uh, Gail Kennedy, spoke of you in your, in your travels. She said that you went deep into Aboriginal settlements to play for people who had never seen shows before. So looking back, what was it like playing shows in places like that? It was a fantastic experience, a really fantastic experience. There was one that we were going to, I'm just trying to remember the name of it, and we had such a terrible day trying to get there that round about dark, finally, for the first time, we sort of gave up. We stopped and we said, well, we're not going to make it, can't do the show sort of thing. Next thing, a couple of utes and trucks came roaring up the dirt road and they said, oh, no, you've got to come. The people are out there, they're camped in the riverbed. Come on, we're all there. And so in we went and I know as our, our truck, our thunder, Roll over the riverbed, there were people camped with their campfires all along a dry riverbed. When we got there, they helped us unload. They got out um, sort of, oh, made us a makeshift stage. They put up our ticket box. The ticket box was two empty 44 gallon petrol, <laughs> uh, petrol, you know, and Auntie Yuna stood there and everybody filed through that. We set up a generator, which we always carried, and we had this show and it was fantastic. <laughs> so the audience, I've never forgotten that show. It was a very special one. We stayed there overnight. Everyone gave us a terrific time, Daddy. And <laughs> you know what? People said, all the people always said, you know, you and Slim always came back. Sometimes other people might come once, but you came back and that's why we got so attached to you. Well, I'll tell you, they were the reason we came back. They were just mm. so tremendous. Mm. And it, it's interesting uh, listening to Gail uh, talk about those shows and about how you were out in the country. She said, uh, and I found it very profound, she said that you and Slim and your music, it felt like home. And to her, your music is home. So when you spend most of your life on the road, where was home to you, Joy? Caravan for 17 years. That was home. And after we were first married, we built a home in Sydney, which we were paying off, like every other newly married couple. Mm -hmm. And we always came back to that base while... Um, my mother was alive and living there and all the family was centred there. Mm. After and that, with the long Australian outback tours, we kept coming back to a little village on the Gippsland Lakes where really we had found a second family as well. Uh, the Gilsonan families and Mac Cormack and we built a small house there. So we used to come back and put the big caravan on the grass verge outside it and have a few weeks off. Well, not really off because we'd be planning and um, booking the next tour for the next year, <laughs> wouldn't we? <laughs> <laughs> um, look, I, I think that you are just an extraordinary person, Joy. And one of the things that makes me so impressed by you is the fact that you were doing everything. I mean, you're, you're booking the tours using a telegram. You're managing, organizing, running the shows, selling the tickets. 
I mean, what were the moments that made all of that work worth it for you? We were, we were happy. Slim was happy and was his dream from the time he was a young teenager to travel with his own show. And from the songwriting point of view, we both loved, loved getting the stories and writing the songs, you know, and uh, truly some, some industry people have said, you know, Slim was like a historian of the bush. And uh, he, did, he used to say, actually, there's so many good stories there, true stories, things. He said, I'll never be able to get them all down, you know, and, and get them out there. It was the people, always, Danny, it was the people and the, the, the music. But going back to all those people, got that way that um, even before we um, did bookings for shows, locals knew which seats they were going to have and I think they would have an argument with somebody if they didn't get that seat back <laughs> next year, you know. Mm -hmm. We used to watch them. Sometimes people would come through rain or dusty roads and potholes, whatever. And some of them, one, I remember, one family out of Charleville, truly, they, it again, was raining. They came from a, a station 80 miles away in that time. And they got there just as we were doing the finale. So I tell you, we sat them down and they got another half hour show. <laughs> <laughs> and every year after that, they still had their place in the front row. <laughs> oh, brilliant. Um, I, I wanted to quote someone wiser than me um, who said that many different people wrote country music songs uh, uh, about uh, the Australian country, but uh, Joy and Slim wrote music while they were on the country, um, which I thought was very lovely and I think there was one song in particular from you which was Lights on the Hill uh, which of course won the very very first ever Golden Guitar Award so you made history um, I would like to know where is that Golden Guitar Award? It's right here um, no, sorry, that one is up in the Slim Dusty Centre and Museum at Kempsey. Mm. We've got nearly all of them up. I'm just looking up top there. Uh, we've got two, three of the golden guitars sitting up there. But uh, we, most of the awards and things are up in the Kempsey Centre, the Slim Dusty Centre. Mm. Um, and kept, um, and kept some of the songwriting awards and put them on my old piano, which is here still. Mm. Um, but that's where a lot of the awards are. We just kept just a few special ones. Mm. Um, so I, I did want to talk to you about the Slim and I album um, because it was really, really lovely listening to all of the music and have it peppered with little audio grabs from the interviews uh, from other musicians and uh, people talking about your music. Uh, and uh, as a musician, what does it feel like to have other music legends like Paul Kelly, Casey Chambers, Missy Higgins, mm -hmm. speaking about mm -hmm. your music and your life? What is that like? I was incredibly complimented, Danny, really. These are people like, you know, Don, Don Walker, there's Casey and Bill, or Troy, and, um, you know, and Paul Kelly. Truly, uh, people, you know, that I respect in music because they they are just downright plain marvellous, really are. Mm. And to that, that, and uh, also it was strange. They had actually um, analysed the music and that sort of thing, which I had never done myself. 
And mm. I thought it was, I was very interested to hear uh, what they thought, you know, and explained about the music. Mm. Uh, because it was really pointed out to me uh, many times that I really did not have any musical tuition much or anything mm. like that. But I would thank those people very much indeed. It's the same as when I hear them, um, as a very occasionally, I've heard them to sing some of my songs and give the songs their interpretation. I'm absolutely complimented and I think they can do wonderful things with those songs. They, they interpret them in different ways, sing them differently, you know? Mm. And um, I love hearing that. Yeah. Uh, um, and I, I thank them actually for all the support and everything that they've given me, you know, they've become such good friends. That's actually absolutely beautiful to hear. Um, and something I found really, really lovely is listening to the last song that you wrote, which was uh, I Don't Believe You. And this is, of course, performed with a, a multi-generational uh, team here. You know, your daughter, Annie, your, your grandchildren uh, from Small Town Romance, that the band. Um, so yeah. when, you, when you listen to a song you wrote performed by your family, I mean... Yeah. What a strange experience that must be. How is that for you? It, it is. It really, really is. I thought that's something I never, ever thought could ever happen to me. I mean, Jim and Flora um, got hold of that song after it had been lying in on, in on a cassette in a drawer for about 15 years because I wrote it just... Uh, couple of years after Slimmer's death and put it away. So they got hold of it and asked me, could they adapt it a little to suit their style and their recording style and everything. I said, oh, lovely. You know, thought that was great. Well, Jim and Flora, and Flora in particular, has done so much, it's really ended up like a co-write. Though I can't sit down and co-write with someone, but they got hold of it and they did a lot of adaptation. Laura wrote some slightly different um, lyrics in this latter part of it. And then to have my grandchildren doing that, then singing it, and Anne, my daughter, coming in to sing that last verse. Mm. Uh, it is, I suppose that's something that I can't, I can't top. That was a thrill. Three generations of us involved in one, one song. And mm. um, <laughs> it was just lovely. I think I probably mm. got a bit teary when I first heard the recording. <laughs> oh, well, it's a beautiful song and uh, I do have to let you go. So um, before I do, uh, with all this fuss, you know, with, all, with the movie and the, the soundtrack, what do you think Slim would think about all of this? He'd be most intrigued. <laughs> he'd say, oh, well, he'd say, good on your mother. <laughs> <That's> probably. <laughs> oh, dear me. He'd be right there, right in it, you know. He'd be totally enjoying it. He'd have his guitar out and he'd be into it and telling me the, where I went wrong in writing that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, fantastic. Well, um, Joy, may I say it has been an absolute pleasure talking with you. This has been uh, a real joy. Uh, so thank you so much for joining me here on Build Series Sydney. Oh, thank you very much, Danny. I've really enjoyed talking to you. You've made me think a lot about some of those muddy roads. <laughs> <laughs> You're adorable. <laughs> yeah, you made me think about it, Danny. So thank you very much. <laughs> My pleasure.